Hey guys, it's Mrs. Invest. Today's video is all about REITs. I want to talk about why I am not invested in REITs or a very, very small percent of my portfolio that is almost negligible that I should probably sell is invested in REITs. And you know, as important as it is to talk about what we're invested in, I also think it's really important to talk about what we choose not to invest in and what those reasons are that we choose not to invest in certain assets. Now, keep in mind, just because I don't personally invest in REITs does not mean I think they're a bad investment. They could be perfect for you. They're just not right for me. And I have my own reasons for not investing in them, which is what I really want to get into in today's video. But keep in mind, these are just my views. And to know if REITs are right for you, you might want to contact your financial advisor. I'm sure they'll have a better answer. All right, let's get right into the video into why I don't think REITs are the real estate investment that everyone makes them out to be. So a REIT is a company that you can invest in by buying units of the company and being a unit holder. And these companies hold pretty much exclusively income producing real estate. So that can be things like commercial real estate, medical facilities, apartment buildings, retail centers, you know, your Walmart and Loblaws. And you can find REITs that own only certain certain types of real estate. So REITs that only hold apartment buildings or REITs that only hold retail centers. And then there's other REITs that hold a little bit of everything. Now, what's special about REITs is that they have to pay out most of their taxable income to investors. And this usually comes to investors in the form of passive income, which everyone loves, you know, the buzzword passive income, and it comes as distributions. Um, what you sacrifice though is a little bit of capital appreciation and generally people buy REITs for the passive cash flow. Now, since REITs have to pay out more, most of their income to investors, you usually tend to see a pretty good dividend yield compared to something like the Canadian banks or other dividend aristocrats on the Canadian stock market. But we'll get more into that in a little bit. Now, you may have heard of some of the most popular REITs. If you've ever rented an apartment from Killam, that's Killam Apartment REIT. There's also Canadian Apartment REIT, RioCan Apartment REIT, Smart Centers Apartment REIT. If you've ever gone shopping to like, you know, the complexes with Walmart and Home Depot and you've seen this like peng black and orange penguin that says Smart Centers, that's a REIT. If you've ever opened a door to a mall and you've seen a little sticker that says Primaris on it, that's a REIT. So these are all companies that own these massive portfolios of real estate buildings and you as an investor can buy units into that company and um, benefit from getting the passive income that these properties generate. So all of this sounds great, passive income, what's not to like? Well, what I think it boils down to and the reason that I don't invest in REITs, actually I have a very small amount of REIT and I don't know why I'm still holding it, but it's like less than 1% of my portfolio, not even. So I basically don't invest in them. And the reason is basically that I don't think they are the real estate investment that everyone makes them out to be. You see, when you own a REIT, you really have no true underlying ownership of that property. You have no control over it. You can't pick the paint colors. You cannot screen your tenants. You are not responsible for increasing the rent. And it doesn't matter how many units of that REIT you own, you will never own that property. You are really only investing in it on paper. The only way to have ownership of the property would be to buy out the REIT, which would cost you billions of dollars. And if you had billions of dollars, why would you be buying out the REIT? Another huge thing that you can't do with REITs that you can do with real estate is depreciation. So when you own an actual real estate property, you can use the costs of fixing and improving the property to offset your income from the property to reduce your overall taxes. You can't do that with a REIT. Another thing is with real estate, you have options to pull out equity tax free, like with a HELOC a home equity line of credit. You can't do that with a REIT. So if you want to pull out equity in your REIT, you have to sell the REIT and pay the tax bill. Another negative of REITs is that they pay out distributions. And if you've watched my past videos, you know that distributions have the worst tax treatment of any investment income and they are right up there with taxable income. So you can't claim the dividend tax credit on REITs. Now, I guess all of that stuff you could look past if the returns were really, really good. So let's compare a REIT ETF 
to a low fee US index ETF. So let's compare VRE from Vanguard, which is a REIT ETF, to VFV, which is the Vanguard S&P 500 ETF. Now, if you look at the past five years, the cumulative return of VFV, the S&P 500 ETF, was 89%. So that means if you invested $10,000 five years ago, today you'd have about $18,000. It's almost a doubling in five years, which is really good for a truly passive Passive investment, provided that you didn't panic sell during the downturns and you actually held. Compare that to VRE and the cumulative five-year return is 45%. So if you invested 10,000 five years ago, that would be about 14,500 today. Now you might say, well, that's just a five-year snapshot in time. What about a longer period? And honestly, the longer you make this comparison, the worse that it gets for REITs. So all, with all this said, really the only benefit I see of investing in REITs is to diversify your portfolio and maybe you can make a case for passive income as well, provided that the REIT is held in a taxable account so you don't get slaughtered on the tax burden from the distributions. You know, when certain sectors have a tough time, if you have REITs, they can be there to smooth out the volatility. But beyond that, I don't really see a compelling reason as a young investor to put a lot of my money into REITs. Now, listen, I get it, I get it. Passive income, seeing those dividends and distributions come in, it feels so good. We can be enamored by dividend yield. It's like the best thing we've ever seen, right? Money just appearing in our account. But what you have to remember is, especially if you're young, or never mind if you're young, if you're still trying to grow your portfolio from nothing into something to have enough money so that you can retire and never have to work again, if you are investing heavily in high yield producing assets, especially if they're held outside of taxable accounts, not only will you be paying taxes on the passive income you're getting, which means you have less to reinvest back into that investment, but you are typically sacrificing long-term capital appreciation. And all you have to do um, when it comes to REITs is pull up some long-term charts. And yes, they definitely do have good dividend yields, but if you look over time, you'll hold for many, many, many years before seeing any real appreciation in the price of your shares. And um, God forbid you buy during a, a peak of a REIT, it could be like, 10 years plus before your shares have comfortably appreciated. And I think that's something that is really important and shouldn't be ignored. You have to remember that you are going into buying these investments for the main purpose of collecting the yield. And if you're still at a stage where you're growing your portfolio, reinvesting those yields is one way to do it. But you're probably going to end up with lower total returns than if you just invested in a low cost index from the beginning. And so in my opinion, the only reason to invest in REITs for me right now would be diversification to diversify my portfolio, just kind of smooth out volatility in other sectors. And if you've watched my channel, you know that I am invested in a fairly volatile asset, <coughs> Tesla stock. And I am no stranger to volatility, so kind of smoothing out my portfolio volatility right now is not really something that I care to do. And I'm not really, really, blah, 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 blah. I'm not really willing to sacrifice total return for the sake of reducing volatility at this point in my life. Whoa, whoa. So let me know guys what your take is on REITs, if you invest in them, if you don't, why you do, why you don't, I'd love to hear it. If you have any questions, you can put them in the comments and I'll get back to you. And I hope you guys have a great day. See you in the next video. Bye.